called Gaff. You know what a Gaff is? Yeah. Gaff is your host, basically, yeah. And they, I, I used to teach uh, refugees for a while, and they tell you stories about things that went on, you know. And this is one story they told me. You get all your, I get all my stuff from stories I, that people tell me, you know. As uh, so, I don't tell me anything. <laughs> better advice. You'll have a poem from last night, I'm sure. <laughs> Bible. It's called, the poem from last night is called Belly Mullin When I Was Young. <laughs> when I was young, the moon was blue. When I was young, I had shiny shoes. Okay, Gaff. After getting off outside the rented Gaff in Harris Town. Hold on, I've lost the other side of this. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, start again. Gaff! After getting off outside the rented Gaff in Palmerston, they, the Kurdish twins, Latif and Khalid, went on in and found the back door open and the landlord's widescreen TV and his microwave and his DVD and his stereo with the 5.1 surround all gone. And on a white tile in the center of the kitchen floor, the icing was a warm, steaming, half pound squiggle of shit. What a compliment. So they got on the landline to the landlord, and though they didn't really have enough of the English to explain, see it was their near fluent cousin Tariq who made all the arrangements for the house. Still, they did their fa fa faltering, st -st stuttering, pigeon damnedest to communicate the unwelcome event <coughs> taking place. Though the crap, they agreed, would just be too indecorous to mention. Took all of 35 minutes for the landlord to burn up the road from Nace, by which the lads had both had to flee twice up the stairs to spew up their lunch from shoveling that mess up. The perfume, of course, they couldn't get rid of. And when the landlord addressed them in sentences punctured with snorts, grunts and tuk-tuks, the two boys assumed invisible spores had this measured young man in a suit so irate. He seemed to use the wrong parts of his throat. So they nodded and were jolly when he announced something like he'd return and on to fix it all up and took the instruction to sit tight and wait. And by now, anyways, the stinker was fading, or were they just getting used? The nose is a merciful beast. How else could anyone keep down their food when they, like, live in a dump or sewer or trench? Well, half an hour on, Mr. Landlord strode in at the head of the school of Gardaí, who proceeded to read out caution and rights while coughing Latif and Khalid who of course didn't have a bald notion what the Gardaí were saying, and with the height of fear and frustration began loud pleadings in Farsi, but their pleadings, which I suppose in this climate is hardly surprising, were not heard quite rightly, the coppers deciding to take them for threats and abuse, which in themselves are gravely offensive and add a great deal of weight to a charge sheet. And what happened next? What were they like? Was there kicking and biting, or did they go quiet? Were they hauled out in full view of the street? Were they too proud to cry? Did they shake? Did colour drain out through the cracks in their skin, the way water is parched from a lake? <laughs>